Um, okay, so we've just finished up watching the uh, Battlefront 2 uh, announcement on uh, Celebration. And uh, we just kind of wanted to sort of share our thoughts on it. It was epic, to be honest. I actually... Uh, oh, it was. It was I... amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be such a good thing. We've got like a proper campaign co- uh, code, campaign uh, story as well. Yeah, like and and one that I'm gonna I want to I've got a few notes I wrote down actually. Um, there's a few things I want to actually talk about there because uh, there's there's some there's some story points in that that have already been covered in other uh, media. The the guy on the bridge of the Star Destroyer is in a book. The red oh, guy, okay. the guy in red. Yeah. He's called Gallius Rex, and he is uh, the uh, Emperor Palpatine's right hand man and the person who leads the Empire into what then becomes the First Order. Ah. So he he at the end of uh, a book called so if anyone is going to read the book obviously spoiler alert but um at the end of Empire's End the contingency plan that Emperor Palpatine puts together whereas everyone has to go to the unknown regions um he is the person that that sort of uh, puts that into place he's the one that's on Jakku and sets off all the chain reactions and stuff that basically gets Jakku to where it is now because it's it's actually a a, a a sort of um a base or a jump off point into the unknown regions. Um, and they kind of use it for various um, sort of experiments and stuff, and it's it's quite a, it's quite a nasty place actually. It kind of reminds me a lot of sort of Nazi Germany, to be honest. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not nice. Um, but no. yeah, his his um, his role in it is basically as, as trying to carry out the Emperor's plans, and uh, he's a very big part of the um, the sort of um, the the Imperial downfall in terms of how they actually. So the idea is is that the Empire could have carried on without Palpatine, but he doesn't want it to. He wants the case to be that once the king is taken, the chessboard falls apart sort of thing. So it's checkmate. The Empire can't continue after that. No. Um, and that's basically how it works. So, yeah, he, he just goes around destroying everything that the Empire built and basically just sort of leaving it in ruin and then going off and, well, uh, attempting to fund the First Order, but he doesn't end up doing it in the end because he's he's killed off. But, yeah, that's basically the point. But he's he's obviously in that... But I mean, he's, he's very... There's no images of him, I don't think, but he's very much described as the character that you see in, uh, in that trailer. So I think that he's going to play yeah. quite a big part of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, um, campaign. Yes. Wow, wow! Inferno Squad or Inferno Squadron, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. the book that comes out in, was it twenty fifth yeah, of they, July? Yes, they did this last time with Twilight Company, didn't they? Um, with the last Battlefront game. They released a book called Battlefront. Oh, did they? I didn't yes, know that. Yes, they did. Yeah, it was called Twilight Company. So they're kind of doing the same thing with this. But obviously, the difference being, this is going to be more story-based. Yes. Um, and I probably will pick this one up. I didn't pick up Battlefront. Oh, no, no I did. Sorry, I have got it. Apologise. Oh. I have got that book. I just haven't read it yet. I really think I might get this book. Yeah, it looks oh, really good. God. It does look really good. Um, oh, slightly off kilter. Have you seen there's a Phasma book coming out? Sorry, what? Yeah, there's someone's writing a Phasma book. I know how much you love her. Share everyone the mug. There it is. Like there it is, people. One. Yeah. I'll be getting that then, definitely. I do. Oh, hold on. I also have. Where are you? <laughs> oh. I have. Uh, oh, hello. She's fallen over. She's drunk. So uh, I have uh, my little bobblehead bobble head one. Yeah. But I have two bobbleheads as well. You have another bobblehead? Yeah, I have a special. Oh, hello. She's de- disassembling her uh, entire... I have, um, and my Poe Dameron X-Wing just fallen on the floor. Oh, no. So this, this is my special, actual shiny one, if you can see it. Yeah. Very nice. But, yes, there's a Phasma book coming out. Um, there wasn't really much information given on it, but apparently it takes place on the run-up to uh, The Last Jedi. So I know that means it's going to cover <gasps> Force Awakens Ooh. as well. Oh. But, yeah. <laughs> as we can all see, Emma is a massive Phasma fan. Yeah. So, okay. So there was a lot of stuff they announced with this. They did, they didn't hold anything back. Uh, I mean, even the uh, the sort of host was quite surprised by how much they had to to sort of give, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and they they kind of kicked off with a trailer almost instantaneously as well. Kind of just this is what this is what it is. Um, and what I quite liked was that the the leaked trailer that they had uh, a few days ago that was amazing anyway clearly was actually not leaked i think that was intentionally put out on there. i think it was because it's 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 like a um a very sort of trundicated version of yeah the, the actual trailer they put out today which is a really good trailer oh um, my god yeah so the main sort of points we get a campaign we're getting multiple eras we're getting 
a huge amount of uh, content, like in oh, terms of planets and. You're not just going to have your heroes as in like uh, characters like Luke and Darth Vader and that. Mm-hmm. You're actually going to have hero uh, like um, your spacecrafts and things like that. It's, it's so much more. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like you can. It it seems to it seems to sound a little bit more like the older Battlefront game, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, uh, what I mean by that is the, the obviously this is about classes so obviously if everyone remembers the old Battlefront game you had uh, the list the menu that you used to use to uh, to basically choose what class you were going to be and then as you got further through the game you unlocked more classes by getting kills so for instance if you're playing as the uh, well I mean I, there's a lot of mods that kind of went a bit further but in the original game if you're playing as for instance the um, the, the droid army you would unlock uh, the the um, droid cars and the uh, the magna droids and stuff like that you'd unlock them as you went um yeah. but i the, the difference being here i don't know whether you carry that on into the next game because with that one it was it was a very it was a game based um system so you you'd unlock those uh units in that game but then when you move on to the next game you'd go back to square one again um so you didn't keep those kills you had to unlock them so it meant that all the the bigger more um heavier units wouldn't come into the game until quite late on if you're playing online like people would have to get a good amount of kills before they start appearing so the initial sort of maybe five minutes of a match would be very basic units that would then slowly get more and more intense um so i think that may be potentially where they're going but they were quite i was quite surprised because i actually expected them to have some gameplay stuff there they kept that quite vague yeah considering it's going to be out november yeah, they kept I it quite vague. I thought there might be something. I'm assuming it'll be left for E3 now. Um, I mean, obviously, this isn't a gaming yeah. convention. No, it's um, not. That's the main sort of difference. So I'm, I'm assuming that that'll be shown E3, I think. I, I think hope so. I want some gameplay. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. So, Space Battles. Oh! <laughs> I, I, was, I was quite um, I was quite amazed by like sort of the detail they'd gone into with with the space battles by the look of it um and they said it was quite a big part of the uh the process of building the yes. game as well um they had a whole place like a whole system or sorry a whole unit devoted entirely to building it um so it sounds like they're going to have capital to capital ship battles i don't know whether that's going to mean they're going to just be fighting as like a background piece though um yeah because it's kind of what they did on the old game. Like they just kind of had like a star destroyer and a, um, and a and a and a just two ships sort of side by side, and you'd sort of you'd leave the hangar and you'd fight the other team and try and disable their capital ship. But they actually didn't do anything themselves. Um, they just kind of just fired a few laser bolts and just kind of sat there looking pretty. Um, so I wonder if they'll be a bit more involved this time around. Uh, I'm on the Battlefront website. It literally just says for space battles. It's all they've got is wage war and spectacular space battle scenarios. Yeah. Weave between asteroids, fly across imperial dockyards, take down massive capital ships, and pilot renowned craft like the Millennium Falcon or Luke Skywalker's X Wing mm-hmm. in exciting dogfights up to 24 players. Okay, 24 players. How many do they currently have on space? It's not oh, that many, is it? No. That's 12 per faction. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, like, I was. Is it not 10 v 10, I think, at the moment? I think it's 10v10. So they've upped it by four. I kind of maybe expected more, but that's... Yeah. But then I suppose it depends on... Um, it's going to depend on two things. The first thing is going to be um, like how intense the battles are. So if you have got capital ships, how much, how close they are. And if there's not a lot of free space, then 24 yeah. ships will feel like a lot. Um, yeah. And also the other thing is going to be uh, whether they're actually going to be bots. Because obviously in the um, current Battlefront game, it's 10v10, but there's also 10 bots on each team as well there is yeah so if you add that into the equation then it could be quite a big battle so we'll have to see that that's intriguing um mm. does it say anything about single um uh, single play uh like ground campaign at the 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 um limit on that because obviously battlefield one is currently sat at 64 players as the as the upper limit of what you can play as online and i'm intrigued to know if they'll go that far battlefront because i feel like it needs it potentially especially with the manual uh, it vehicles says in. here join up to 40 players in massive multiplayer fights in authentic locations across all areas okay so they haven't upped the limit on that then no hmm. we'll have to see we'll have to see yeah. how it works i suppose it's 
the, and also, the, it's what what can they serve as handle as well, or things like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is the uh, like the, the current battlefront, the uh, forty players on the map feels really intense when yeah. you have a, a map like, for instance, Cloud City, or something that's that you have these sort of bottlenecks. Yes, where like. 40 people fighting feels like a thousand people fighting because it's just insane and everyone's spawning constantly so it's just a, it's a never-ending stream of people and it just feels huge whereas on like Hoth for instance it sometimes it can get intense when you get into the tunnels so on yes. like, like beta outposts when you get into the actual um, into the hangars and you're in the tunnels like those fights can be incredible but when you're out in the open with the atats, it feels very much uh, it, it doesn't feel like a huge fight um, it does feel very much like a skirmish. I was kind of hoping they go more towards the bigger battles on this, mm. but maybe not. Um, I mean, I'm being a bit entitled here, to be honest, because they gave us a lot. In it all is. Fairness. They did. <laughs> they did give us a hell of a lot. This games. This is just Star Wars celebration. Yeah, yeah. They gave us a lot of information. They gave us a hell of a lot of information. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there's a massive campaign. There's a, uh, a space battles and let's talk about the eras then. So they've said that they're going to have the prequel era, which I'm surprised about. Yes. Um, I expected sequel era because obviously that's the current thing. But the fact they're going for prequel era is really surprising. So yeah, we'll get to play as Darth Maul. Yes. And Yoda. Which could be quite good actually because he's, he's, is he the only one that has the, the double lightsaber? Yes, he's the only one with the double blade lightsaber as far as I'm aware. Um, and also, he's quite. I mean, Yoda as well. He's tiny, so the the game. Oh, yeah. So they he can do did, a lot of jumping. Like they he did, did for that. The it's not the first time I've done it because he was in. Um, he was in the Battlefront original Battlefront games, um, and they. I mean, he was quite jumpy. That's kind of how they made it. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to work this because obviously they were saying about how things are interchangeable. So obviously they've kind of got a. a um, a ranking system for each of them that are kind of interchangeable. Yeah. So you'll have like a Stormtrooper variant that, and you'll have a Clone Trooper variant and you'll have a First Order Trooper variant that will sit in the same sort of area. Um, I'm intrigued to know how it's going to work in terms of heroes though because as we all know the prequels are much more intense uh, in terms of lightsaber battles for instance. Yes. So like if you have your Raiders and your Lukes in the, in the, in the, the original trilogy and you have your Rays and your um, Kylo Ren's and their fighting is still it, they obviously the sequel trilogy tried to copy the original trilogy and be quite clunky and like when they wield their swords they look like actual swords whereas prequel prequel era they they basically danced to be honest around each other they actually they look, did, yeah yeah they looked like they weren't trying to hit each other most of the time especially so. the whole uh, the Phantom Menace wasn't it? yeah the Phantom Menace that when they had you had Obi Wan and Qui Gon and Darth Maul, and that was that was that was like a dancing display, wasn't it? The way they were fighting yeah, it all was, three of them. Yeah, it was just like showing off half the time. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to know how they play that in this, like how far they'll go with the whole uh, sort of. Yeah. I hope that it's not going to be a lot. It just it's a standard how how they fight it with a lightsaber. It's all going to be the same. It's almost like you just got a different skin. Yeah, they, I don't want that. I want. Uh, I, I, I don't want that. Yeah, I want a bit of character in there. I, but it sounds like they have because they were saying about. I mean. Did I hear right? Because obviously they said about your personal trooper, you can obviously customise and upgrade. But it definitely sounded like they said your heroes can be the same they, as well. That's what I thought as well, that the hero you can upgrade as well. And, oh, yeah, that's going to be so cool. That is, if you could do that. Yeah, like it makes How? you wonder. Yeah, it's going to be like, I mean, you can upgrade Darth Maul even, to be even more deadly than he is at the beginning of the game. I mean, yeah. can you imagine if you, if you spent all your time <laughs> ploughing everything into Darth Maul and then like you get to play him on a map and just you just obliterate everyone that'd be so cool like yeah like people would know what hit him and then vice versa but they also said that your your squad can get enough upgrades to be able to go toe to toe with some of that as well um which would be pretty cool so yeah I mean I'm, I'm it's assuming... gonna, I think it's going to make the game more of... Because uh, when I play Battlefront, it's like, oh, I'll play it for a little bit and then I'll come off. It but sounds like they're this, gonna... this is going to make you want to play for a longer period. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to add a bit of longevity to it, I think. Yes. Um, not not just in terms of like how... I mean, because people are still playing Battlefront now and it's still, oh, the server's yeah. still full. But I think um, I think the main issue is more uh, like each particular play session, I, like after an ant, like maybe half an hour to an hour of Battlefront I tend to just switch off a little bit I do yeah um, I know what you mean I do the same um, I mean like we spent how long on Battlefield 1 the other day um, and to be fair the only reason we finished was because we realised I mean we almost forgot we were streaming 
Yeah. So we, we finished it because <laughs> it we realised. Literally... Yeah, we realised that people were probably bored to death of watching us do this. Yeah, we, we forgot that we are streaming. It's not just friends playing how we'd be like anyway. Yeah, when exactly. We're not streaming, so, but so yeah. we finished it. And that, I mean, I could have gone on playing that all night, and that's that's oh, something I yeah, never. Yeah, really... that was so good. Yeah, and I'm kind of hoping this is what they go with Battlefront. I mean, the, Battlefield One came out after Battlefront, the first one, so they they kind of had, um, like I mean, in terms of balancing the feedback from it i'm hoping they have taken a lot of things from battlefield i know them trying to keep them separate games but ultimately yeah. battlefield is one of the best games they've ever released like battlefield one if they oh, take yes. little pointers out of that to i mean for instance the operations um that we were playing like that, that whole game mode of operations is just amazing oh it is um and could you imagine i mean they've tried to do it in uh in battlefront obviously you've got the battle stations where you go from space to the Death Star to the yes. trench one, and they they tried little bits like that. They but, did, but could you imagine if they did that as, um, for instance, the Battle of Scarif? So you you play on the ground, and then oh, and then you and then you do the space battle, and then you play like the last bit of the ground battle, and then you play the corridor or something. Oh, that would be so good. I mean, I, I mean, me and uh, me and Tom were talking about this today. Actually, we were saying about uh, it would be awesome if, for instance. If you've done the Battle of Scarif, um, and then the last mission was the Corridor mission. And basically it was a case of like the, the person on the Imperial team that got the most kills got to play as Vader for that one thing. It's like, <laughs> so like a bonus round. Wow, it was like, so it was like a, it was like a two minute bonus round where you just obliterated people for two yes. minutes. Like, and it just gave you a, a ton of XP and you were just like, yeah, cool, you won that round, off you go sort of thing. And that was it. And everyone yeah. else just played as Rebels and just kind of had a laugh trying to take out Vader. And like, I mean... Potentially, they would give you a chance to maybe kill him, but it would be almost impossible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, Definitely. So they, they could kind of make it so that, yes, you get all the XP, but if you get killed, you lose it all or something. Like, So they give it a bit, bit of an edge, and the person who kills you gets a ton of XP. Well, that's the thing, because things in the, in the game, they don't completely follow the films, because you can, like like the whole thing where, you can, you be, be, where you've got the three stages to go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't do it right, you don't get to the next stage. So it doesn't follow the film. That was it. The, you've no. lost. <laughs> no, but I mean, obviously, again, if we go back to operations, that worked. That if you didn't get through that stage, and you played it yep. again. Um, so the attacking force got a second chance. They just had less men to do it. Yes. Um, and the defending force was usually in a really... I mean, we were in that one game we played on Battlefield 1, we were in a really bad place. I mean, we won the oh. game and everyone was celebrating. And then when it came back, we realised we had like two checkpoints out of yeah. the eight that we had on the map. And the other team had a armored train and all of their oh, reinforcements back yeah we could have done with that train so i mean if they play it similar to that i mean for instance if you're playing on a map and the imperials lose on an offensive and then when they uh when they come back for the second round an imperial star destroyer turns up and starts blowing the hell out of everyone my god or, or a bunch of uh 8080s turn up and start decimating yeah like, do, you, do you know what i mean like it's very easy to play this sort of thing into uh into the same kind of thing into the same hands um, so I'm kind of hoping they go down that route. It'd be nice not just to have the attacks and things like that, just in specific places. Yeah. Oh. It'd be nice. It'd be very yeah, nice. It would. You know, I can't wait to play as Kylo Ren and have a temper tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope he has a special ability that's called the temper tantrum. <gasps> oh, I hope so. It He's just got... makes him invulnerable for like 30 He's seconds like... and he just kills everyone. An emo, isn't he? Uh, okay, so we've been on about 20 minutes now, so I want to kind of leave it at the moment so final yeah. thoughts what do you think final thoughts oh my, i can't wait i am so excited for this even more i think a bit i think i'm more excited for this than i was for battlefront because this there's more things you can do and all the the leveling up you can do for all sorts of stuff there's going to be hero crafts and your hero like kylo ren and oh i'm just so yeah. excited yeah. i'm all i'm just yeah oh the only thing i don't know if i if i I'm not sure if I like this. Like this whole pre-order bonus they said about. Uh -huh. So you, to get the last Jedi heroes, you have to pre-order. Yeah, they love their pre-orders, okay. though, don't they? They do. And also, if you pre-order, you get not only the in-game rewards, you get the chance to dive into the game uh, before it's released worldwide. Okay, guys. So uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of it. Uh, my final thoughts are: uh, it looks really promising. It looks a lot better than the last one, like by it far. Does. And uh, I'm really hoping that it uh, sort of plays up to all the expectations that fans have got but it definitely sounds a lot more promising than the last one um the only obviously just to be the <clears throat> to play devil's advocate though i was sat doing the same sort of thing 
when the last one was announced because that looked amazing at the same time as well but uh, saying that judging by the panel it sounds like they have listened to the fans and made a lot of uh, adjustments to yeah, where they were they going originally keep saying, like, thanks to like the feedback. To us, yeah, yeah. The, the feedback they've had, which is good that they that they're a they, company that will yeah. listen. Well, they they've listened, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, to to put it in perspective, they got a lot of flack for that game. So feedback basically meant a hell of a lot of crap from the fans. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's like, yeah, thanks for shouting at us for like, two years. <laughs> yeah. Cheers for that. Thanks for joining, guys. And yeah. uh, if you like the video, um, let us know, like and subscribe yeah. it. Um, Please give it a thumbs up. And, yeah, this will yeah. this will go up on myself and on Emma's channel as well. So uh, if you could just uh, like and subscribe to both yes, of us, please. and we'll have more content. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Uh, but so may the fall sweep it. Uh, I can't even say that right. <laughs> okay, may the fall well, sweep with you. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. Oh, bye, bye. <laughs>